The Suragama Sutra, Volume Three, Chapter One. False is just true. Sutra, Ananda, you have not yet understood that all the defiling objects that appear, all the illusory, ephemeral characteristics, spring up in the very spot where they also come to an end. They are what is called illusory falseness, but their nature is in truth. The bright sub sub substance of wonderful enlightenment. Commentary. Ananda, you have not yet understood. Are you still not clear about it? All the defiling objects that appear, the experiencing of each and every external defiling objects, all the illusory, ephemeral characteristics. Illusory means unreal, not actual. Ephemeral means. It seems to exist, and yet it doesn't. It doesn't seem to exist, and yet does. Suddenly it exists. Suddenly it does not. Illusory, ephemeral characteristics are things which are unreal. It looks to you like they actually exist, but in reality they are entirely illusory and transitory. These illusory, ephemeral characteristics spring up. In the very spot where they also come to an end, they come forth anywhere at all and everywhere they happen to come up. That is where they come to an end. Their arising is an empty illusion, and their extinction is an empty illusion. They arise in an empty illusion and vanish in an empty illusion. They are what is called illusory falseness. They go. By the name of empty falseness, but their nature is in truth the bright substance of wonderful enlightenment. It is called falseness. But where do the roots of this falseness arise? They too come from the bright substance of wonderful enlightenment. They come forth from our true mind. The the existence of the true gives rise to the false. When the false arises. There is seeing and characteristics. There is the division of seeing, xiang fen, and the division of characteristics, xiang fen. The existence of the seeing division confers the ability to see things. The characteristics division consists of all the external forms and appearances. The division of seeing and the division of characteristics arise. From the bright substance of wonderful enlightenment, from the pure nature and bright substance of the everlasting true mind, they do not come from elsewhere. Sutra, thus it is throughout up to the five skandhas and the six entrances, so the twelve places and the eighteen realms, the union and mixture of various causes and conditions account for their illusory and false existence and. The separation and dispersion of the causes and conditions results in their illusory and false extinction. Commentary: Thus it is. Why did I say that the illusory, ephemeral characteristics arise in an empty falseness? The doctrine I explained applies throughout. That is to various divisions up to the five skandhas: form, feeling, thought, activity, and consciousness, and. The six senses, that is, the six sense organs, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, to the twelve places, the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind, together with the six defiling objects, which are forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas, and the eighteen realms, the six organs, the six defiling objects, and the six consciousnesses. That are produced between the organs and the defiling objects opposite to them, the eye consciousness, the ear consciousness, the nose consciousness, the tongue consciousness, the body consciousness, and the mind consciousness. The six organs and the six defiling objects make up the twelve places. With the six consciousnesses added, there are the eighteen realms. When the various form and mind dramas mix and unite, empty falseness arises. The union and mixture of various causes and conditions account for their illusory and false existence, and the separation of and dispersion of the causes and conditions result in their illusory and false extinction.
When conscience and conditions do not meet and unite, there is an empty falseness which is called extinction. This is the nature of production and extinction. Sutra, who would have thought that production, extinction, coming and going are fundamentally the everlasting, wonderful light of the treasury of the first come one, the unmoving, all pervading perfection, the wonderful nature of true suchness. If within the true and eternal nature one seeks coming and going, confusion and enlightenment, or birth and death, there is nothing that can be obtained. Commentary They are all non-existent. There isn't anything at all. When you do not understand, there is coming and going, there is confusion and enlightenment. There is birth and death. But if you understand the everlasting true mind, if you recognize your own basic nature, the pure nature and bright substance of the everlasting true mind, you put an end to all the false production and extinction. Then, if you look for such characteristics as coming and going, confusion and enlightenment, and birth and death, you won't find them. You won't find anything at all. Chapter two. The five skandhas, Sutra Ananda. Why do I say that the five skandhas are basically the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first come one? Commentary Ananda. Why do I say that the five skandhas are basically the wonderful nature of true suchness, the treasury of the first come one? I will tell you, Ananda. Sutra Ananda. Consider this example. When a person who has pure, clear eyes looks at clear, bright emptiness, he sees nothing but clear emptiness, and he is quite certain not that nothing exists within it. Commentary: Ananda, consider this example. When a person who has pure, clear eyes looks at clear, bright emptiness, he sees nothing but clear emptiness. His eyes are not diseased, unlike the person who had a film over his eyes. He looks at peace, a space clear for thousands of miles. He sees nothing but clear emptiness. It is just empty space, nothing else. There aren't any clouds in it, and he is quite certain that nothing exists within it. In that emptiness, there isn't anything at all. The treasury of the first common is the same way. In the treasury of the first common, if you truly understand, there isn't anything at all. That's what the sixth patriarch was talking about when he said, "Basically, there is not one thing. Where can the dust alight? That experience too is a treasury of the first come one. So try if for no apparent reason the person does not move his eyes, the staring will cause, fa the staring will cause fatigue, and then of his own accord." He will see strange flowers in space and other unreal appearances that are white and disordered. Commentary: The person is the one mentioned above, who with clear eyes looks at empty space and finds that there is nothing at all there. Empty space is all there is. If for no apparent reason the person does not move his eyes, if he fixes his gaze, his gaze on emptiness and does not move, the staring. Will cause fatigue. He stares with unmoving eyes, looking straight into empty space, and after a long time, he gets tired. Then, of his own accord, he will see strange flowers in space. After looking at empty space for a long time, he sees things in it. For example, strange flowers. That is to say, unreal ones. Why are these strange flowers? Because he has looked. For so long that his eyes have become fatigued, and so all kinds of strange flowers appeared, as well as other unreal appearances that are white and disordered. They are not only strange flowers, but other things he has never seen before, in the five colors and six hues, things which all seem to be real but are not. Perhaps the head of an animal is seen on a human body, or perhaps a person's head. Is it seen with an animal's body? Many irrational things are seen in emptiness, things never seen before, because the eyes become blurry, 
from too much staring. This kind of circumstance is concerned with the scatter of form. So try you should know that it is the same with the scatter of form. Commentary. Now we look at all the things in the world that have form and appearance and we think every one of them is real. In actuality, they follow the same principle as the, the example of the person who stands into space so that the staring causes fatigue and who of his own accord sees strange flowers in space. You should know that it is the same with the scandal form. It is like that too. Sutra Ananda, the strange flowers, come neither from emptiness nor from the eyes. Commentary Ananda, did you know that the scandal of form is the wonderful true suchness nature of the treasury of the first come one? You should know, Ananda, that not any of the strange flowers, those strange flowers and all the other wide and disordered and real appearances come neither from emptiness nor from the eyes. Sutra the reason for this, Ananda, is that if the flowers were to come from emptiness, they would return to emptiness. If there is a coming out and a going in, the space would not be empty. If emptiness were not empty, then it could not contain the appearance of the arisal and extinction of the flowers, just as Ananda's body cannot contain another Ananda. Commentary. You should know the reason for this ananda is just as with the doctrine I have explained above that if the flowers were to come from emptiness, if you say the flowers and the white and disordered and real appearances emerge from the emptiness, they would return to emptiness. Since they are produced from emptiness, they should return to emptiness also. If there is a coming out, and going in, the space would not be empty. If the strange flowers can come forth from emptiness and can return to and enter emptiness, it wouldn't be emptiness. Emptiness is called emptiness because there is not a single thing in it. If something comes out of it and goes back into it, it can't be counted as emptiness because there would be something in it. If emptiness were not empty, then it could not contain the appearance of the arisal and extinction of the flowers. If emptiness is not emptiness, the appearance of flowers would have nowhere to come forth and nowhere to be extinguished, just as Ananda's body cannot contain another Ananda. Emptiness doesn't have anything in it, so the flowers do not come from emptiness. Otherwise, emptiness would not be empty and it would be like your body, Ananda, which cannot contain another Ananda. No other Ananda can come into your body and in the same way, if space is to be empty, it cannot contain external things. Sutra, if the flowers were to come from the eyes, they would return to the eyes. Commentary, perhaps you say that because the eyes staring causes fatigue, the eyes themselves give rise to the strange flowers and the white and disorderly unreal appearances. If the flowers will come from the eyes, they will return to the eyes. Sutra, if the nature of the flowers will come from the eyes, it would be endowed with the faculty of seeing. If it could see, then when it left the eyes, it could it would become flowers in space, and when it returned, it should see the eyes. If it did not see, then when it left the eyes, it would obscure emptiness, and when it returned, it would obscure the eyes. Commentary If the nature of the flowers were to come from the eyes, it would be endowed with the faculty of seeing. Given that it comes from the eyes, it should therefore have the same nature. If it could see, if the flowers in space had a seeing nature, then when it left the eyes, it would become flowers in space, and when it returned, it should see the eyes. When it went out, there would be no flowers in the eyes, and when it returned, the flowers would see the eyes. If it did not see, if when it came back, it did not see the eyes, then when it left the eyes, 
it would obscure emptiness and when it returned it would obscure the eyes it would be as if there were a film on the eyes and as if the film would disappear when the flowers went out and when it returned it would obstruct the eyes your eyes wouldn't hold anything and so if the flowers in space returned to your eyes where could your eyes put them Sutra, moreover, when you see the flowers, your eyes should not be obscured. So why is it that the eyes are said to be pure and bright when does they see clear emptiness? Commentary, moreover, when you see the flowers, your eyes should not be obscured. Still, if you assume that the flowers come from your eyes, when you see the flowers out in space, your eyes should not have a film on them. There should be nothing obstructing them. Why is it that the eyes are said to be pure and bright when they see clear emptiness? Why is it that the eyes are said to be pure and bright when they see clear emptiness devoid of the flowers? Your eyes are said to be pure and bright because there's no film on them. Sutra, therefore, you should know that the scandal of form is empty and false because it neither depends on causes and conditions for existence nor is spontaneous in nature. Commentary, therefore you should know, because of what has just been said, you should know that the scandal of form basically is empty and false because it neither depends on causes and conditions for existence. It does not exist because of causes and conditions, nor is spontaneous in nature. Sutra, Ananda, consider the example of a person whose hands and feet are relaxed and at ease and whose entire body is in balance and harmony. He is unaware of his life processes because there is nothing agreeable or disagreeable in his nature. However, for some unknown reason, the person rubs his two hands together in emptiness and sensations of roughness, smoothness, cold and warmth seem to arise from nowhere between his palms. Commentary Ananda consider the example of a person whose hands and feet are relaxed and at ease. He is at leisure with nothing in particular to do, and whose entire body, the Chinese here is literally the hundred bonds, is in balance and harmony. The meaning is that he is very natural. He is unaware of his life processes. All of a sudden, it is as if he himself forgot, forgets his own body and life because there is nothing agreeable or disagreeable. Disagreeable refers to a state of suffering. Agreeable refers to a state of bliss. He does not experience either suffering or bliss. However, for some unknown reason, the person wraps his two hands together in emptiness. That person has no reason to put his two hands together and wrap them in emptiness, but when he does, sensations of roughness, smoothness, cold and warmth seem to arise from nowhere between his palms. Some people's hands are very rough, some people's hands are supple and soft, as if there were a little oil on them. That softness is what is meant here by smoothness. Or he may feel that his hands are cold. When he wrings them for a long time, they become warm. These are all parts of the function of feeling. The function of feeling comes about when you have a kind of awareness which arises in your mind. The text says that they arise for some unknown reason, that the appearances and roughness, smoothness, cold and warmth are empty and false. So try, you should know that it is the same with the skanda of feeling. Commentary of the five skandhas, you should know that it is the same with the skanda of feeling.